Dr. Andrew Gordon uh, with the Department of Comparative Cultural Studies. Uh, it's really my pleasure to, to welcome all the people I'm talking to. Unfortunately, I can't see you, but you can see me, to uh, what I hope would be a good introduction to who we are and what we plan to do, especially this course, which you'll begin to uh, see a lot more of me uh, throughout the semester. Uh, we are, as you know, a new department, and this is one of our first ventures as a new department, our course, Perspectives on Comparative Cultural Studies, which I'm going to be, have the pleasure of teaching. Um, when thinking about structuring the course and uh, how it would unfold itself to you, I mentioned to our uh, department chair, Dr. Lois Samora, sitting right next to me, uh, it would be really nice if, if you could be here too to talk about the course, to talk about our new department, to talk about the minor, which is Comparative Cultural Studies, because we are all very excited about it. And I was uh, saying before, uh, is it okay if I talk a little personally about why I'm very excited? And I'd just like to tell you a little bit about why I'm, why I'm especially excited about the program. I'm an anthropologist, and our, and our department involves uh, anthropology, it involves virtually all the disciplines, but many anthropologists uh, are part of this program now. And as an anthropologist, I've had the, the privilege of learning about cultures and living in other cultures. I've lived in West Africa, in the Caribbean, in Central America, and I've begun to appreciate cultures, different ways of living, and one of the nice things about being an anthropologist is one can lead a very different life for a short while and uh, learn the ways of other people and make new friends throughout the world, which I've had the privilege of doing. But this uh, department, our new department, is especially exciting for me because it brings in other interests that I have. When we talk about culture and comparative cultural studies, it's not simply culture as in places that I've lived, but it's culture as the distillate, the refined, the artistic expressions of which we think of culture in terms of literature and performing arts and the visual arts. And that's always attracted me very much. I always felt well, I'm not really fulfilling myself all the time when I'm traveling elsewhere, but there are these other dimensions of culture which our department will be looking at, which those of you who are part of the minor will be uh, participating in. And as well, increasingly we find you've become to realize that culture is that which is fashioned for us, that which is uh, in one or another way mapped out for us through what we tend to call our discourses or persuasive communications. And insofar as our lives are frequently shaped by others, we become more aware of culture as that which is directed by others and, and orchestrated for us. So, it brings in these three different avenues, ways of looking at culture, which is really what this course is about, and which will ease our ideas, which will infiltrate, I think, a variety of domains in the program and many of the professors from which you'll be hearing about. There's a lot more to say about the course. I want my uh, department chair, Dr. Lois Samora, to talk a little bit more about the department, maybe about the course, and maybe I'll fill in a little bit more about the course as we go on. But I welcome you all, I thank you for being here, and I look forward to contact throughout the semester and in the future. Thanks, Dr. Gordon. I'm, I'm very privileged to be a part of this introductory session, and I will give a lecture later on in the course, but my uh, idea was to tell you a little bit about myself first, as Andy, as I will call my colleague in <laughs> this uh, informal setting, Andy has told you a little bit about his being an anthropologist. My field is comparative literature, so I'm a comparatist, but my primary materials are novels. I am interested in U.S. and Latin American fiction, and uh, so if we talk about how we approach culture and the discourses that we use and try to learn and uh, let's say understand literary discourse would be mine. Um, what's interesting though with a comparative literature focus is that there is more than one national or linguistic discourse. So my field is Spanish 
and English literature, and particularly uh, Spanish and English literature written in the Americas. So that's my field. How did I come to it? Um, I was born in Sioux Falls, South Dakota, about as mainstream as we used to say. Uh, there's no more a mainstream, I think, in, in our country. But um, my uh, parents and grandparents came from Northern Europe, and I lived for the first 12 years of my life in the Midwest. Uh, at that time, a long time ago, I won't tell you how long, it was pretty much a um, single cultural stream. There were others, but I, I honestly remember the first time I saw a woman smoke. I must have been seven or eight. I was very protected. I remember the first time that I saw uh, an African American. I, I'm embarrassed to tell you. but. My culture was very circumscribed. When did I become a comparatist? Well, in college I was lucky enough to go for a year abroad to France, as it happens. And for the first time, really, I got a perspective on my own culture by being in another one. Uh, many of you, I'm sure, have had that experience already. If you haven't, um, this department is very much interested in offering cultural, uh, experiential learning, study abroad, and other opportunities. But so the year in France was wonderful, and then after graduating, I thought, boy, oh boy, that was lots of fun. I want to do more of that, and I joined the Peace Corps. And I was in a program of rural community development in the country of Colombia, in a village called Quimbaya, which I still very much love and uh, have visited since. I didn't know anything about farming. I was an English major as an undergraduate, but the two and a half years in my village as a rural community developer taught me so much about myself and my own culture as I learned about the village culture in Colombia in the late 60s. So my idea about comparative cultural studies, the new department that I'm, I'm chairing, is that we don't know any culture unless we know it comparatively. If we only are in our own culture, the one we're born into, the one I was born into in South Dakota, and if I'd only stayed there, my idea, and maybe it's wrong, it depends upon the person, of course, but my idea is I wouldn't know my own culture in the same way I do for having learned about others, so other cultures. So this course is very exciting to me because precisely this is what we're going to do. We're going to look at the idea of culture, artifacts of culture, practices, social behaviors, art, literature, but looking at it from various disciplinary lenses. How does a sociologist go about talking about culture? How do I, how does Andy? We're bringing our own professional and disciplinary discourses to the table and asking you to consider these different perspectives. Uh, so you'll see quite a variety of different ways of thinking about culture, different cultures as such, um, and I think that will I hope that we'll end up with our all appreciating our own culture more, other people's cultures more than we would have otherwise. In fact, that's how I see the objective of this course, is to become more aware of the layering, the multicultural worlds in which we live, and to think, to be a better observer, to be a better listener, and to think about our own personal relationship to the various cultures that we all inhabit, because we do inhabit more than one. Here you are watching a video in an institutional culture, which is the University of Houston, and so on. Things you already know, uh, and I don't really need to tell you, but um, what I'd like to say is that if we think about different kinds of discourses, and how those discourses work to communicate among people, between people, whether it's the discourse of the legal profession, let's say, whether it's the discourse of the medical profession, whether it's different social media, we all participate in a number of, of these discourses and it's fun to think about them and observe them and draw conclusions about how they affect our lives. So I am excited, as is Andy, about the, the, the course and about the new department. And I would say a little bit more about the new department. It's not going to be so new when you're watching this video, but it's, we've just uh, instituted the Department of Comparative Cultural Studies. And it comprises, as Andy was indicating, um, anthropology, the discipline of anthropology, which itself is various. Your first 
well, weeks two through five are going to be spent uh, with anthropologists from the department. You'll see how differently they go about culture, even though they have the same discipline, let's say, the overarching term uh, of anthropologist. Um, we have anthropology in the new department, religious studies, India studies, a new minor, and let's see, liberal studies, which is a bachelor's degree comprised of three minors, which gives students a great deal of leeway in choosing what they study and in combining and mixing and matching different sorts of discourses. So interdisciplinarity, or as Tom Baer, head of uh, liberal studies, likes to say, he likes the idea of integration rather than interdisciplinary. How do you integrate disciplines to approach a subject or approach a a cultural artifact. So those are some thoughts that I have. I think Dr. Gordon might want to talk a little more about the course or shall we, uh, what shall we do? Um, I have, oh well, I should get what's, used to talking about the course since I'm going to be teaching it. Uh, what's, what's interesting is that we have so many different lecturers. I think, um, I was thinking when you were talking, if, uh, where I'd be an undergraduate, I'd be thrilled by having a course where there's 20 different lecturers, but not random because they've all been more or less uh, directed, assigned, in, uh, entreated to, to talk in, in terms of a comparative cultural perspective and in a way which will uh, communicate to you undergraduates. We have, as I said, 20 uh, professors from departments across the university. Of course, we relied immensely on our faculty comprised of uh, anthropologists, uh, people in religious studies, uh, Professor Baer, who is the, the head of the program in liberal studies. Uh, but as well for this course and for other courses as well, we're going to be drawing in a variety of, of uh, important viewpoints uh, viewpoints, ways of thinking about things, what we describe of as, as discourses, points of orientation, points of discussion, conversation. And as we've thought about this course, um, we bring the university to you, some of the, the high points of the university in lectures every week. But uh, I'm very eager to hear from you as well throughout the course, and we'll be looking forward to discussing, hearing your points of view, the points that you find have been particularly inspiring, what have uh, raised questions for you from the lectures, and we'll be meeting in seminars as well. So I think this will combine this course that we have, this introductory or gateway course to our new department. Uh, it combines the best methods that we have uh, at the university today of teaching and learning, and as well we have the internet, so that when I'm not around or you want to uh, communicate late night at home. You can send me an email and I'll get it the following morning so we will be able to stay in very close contact. Um, I think uh, I'd like to hear from you and I'm, perhaps people watching in on us would like to hear, how did this whole department get started, this idea of comparative cultural studies? I know it's part of your genealogy in terms of, uh, in terms of your yeah. person. How did this happen? Well, um, it's a rather new development, I must say. I think that there is a trend in university studies toward this kind of integration of disciplines or interdisciplinarity that I mentioned earlier. And I, this is uh, Dean John Roberts, uh, our boss's idea. He approached me as he approached you and your faculty to give us this opportunity to amplify our boundaries and to think beyond the discipline of anthropology, beyond the discipline of literary criticism, and to begin to mix and match and think more globally. Perhaps it's the way of the world, Andy, I don't know. We're all so much more interconnected. Cultures are communicating in ways as never before. I mean, for me, what I'd love to see in this course, anybody interested, is a wonderful study of the new possibilities of communication, which we can lump under the very vague term, globalizing media. But uh, things have changed, as you know, so much. We're older than many of you, I'm sure, and re see, remember when we used to use typewriters and 
easy race papers, <laughs> paper and send letters and so forth. So I think the interconnectedness of the world is pushing the university to think a little more in terms of connections among and, and between uh, disciplines. So the university is still organized as it has been since the 1940s according to literature departments and art departments and history departments and anthropology departments and religion, uh, religious studies programs, but the world isn't so neatly organized any longer. So I think the dean was compelled and impelled to think about how we might do something rather cutting edge. We'll hope that we, uh -huh. we, we, we can <laughs> pull that off, but I've always loved uh, the kitchen sink. One colleague long time ago called me a dilettante, meaning that I did a lot of different things than I do. I do uh, studies of art and architecture and I'm appointed the history department and the English department and so forth. And I took dilettante to be a great compliment. I said, that's wonderful, thank you. And he meant it as such, actually. He wasn't <laughs> insulting me. But I always believed in the kitchen sink. Um, the more things you put on a table and compare, if you're careful, you can't just throw everything on, the, on a table, uh, but the, you put an apple and an orange on the table and say, oh, you shouldn't compare apple. Yes, you should. You can see a lot about an apple and about an orange that teach you about both yeah. by putting them together on the same yeah. table. So, I should say, I should confess one more thing, I'm an identical twin. And I think I must have been in utero comparing myself with my twin. <laughs> so for me, it's just the way I think. I like, I, until I see a different thing, I can't really think about this thing. So, and there are theorists who imagine that thinking is that. It's, it's a binary operation. How do we know salt if we don't know pepper? Well, sorry, that, <laughs> that got a little simplistic. But um, I think you'll find this diversity of approaches not only in the gateway course to the minor of comparative cultural studies, but the possibilities for choosing courses if you decide on this minor, as I take it some of you have, or you might not be taking this course, um, will, will excite your imagination. And that's what we want. We don't want to trot you through the centuries of a given country or a given art form. What we really want is for you to be thinking creatively about the ways that things relate to each other. So I think with that, Andy, maybe we should let our students go and you've got the syllabus in front of you, you're, you're seeing what is assigned, different lecturers will be asking you to do different reading assignments and um, on Blackboard will be asking you to do certain kinds of uh, exercises and so. Um, with that, I think we've introduced ourselves. I think ourselves. We've, we've done an introduction. You'll see more of us, and we'll look forward to seeing you in person. Thank you. Mm -hmm.